Hey guys, so we're gonna continue our video series on building a financial model using Monte Carlo simulation. So in our last video, what we did was we looked at deriving a model that could value a specific security or stock, and we came upon the Gordon Growth Model. And the Gordon Growth Model, what it did was it took a dividend and it projected it into the future at a specific growth rate, and then discounted it back at a required rate return R. And then we simplified it to this form here, where it was D naught one times one plus G divided by R minus G. And that would e equate to an output of V naught, which was our present value of our company today. And then once we derived this model, we then applied the idea and the concept of Monte Carlo simulation, where for each input variable, and these input variables were G and R, we assumed a uniform distribution. And remember, a uniform distribution can be completely described as from a minimum value to a maximum value within that range. And we took a random variable within that range for growth and R. And then we applied this 10,000 different times, and this gave us an output of V naught. We assumed D naught was our initial dividend of $100 for a company. And then we applied this and we plotted the distribution, and this is what it looked like. And we applied some descriptive statistics around this distribution. So now what we want to talk about in this video is the normal distribution. So instead of using a uniform distribution for our input variables, we would like to apply a normal distribution. So what is a normal distribution? A great way to describe it is something that we find in nature. So for example, height. Let's assume that we took, we sampled the entire world population and we found that the average height was six feet. And I'm not entirely sure if it's six feet, but let's assume that it was six feet and we found that it was six feet. What we would find is that the average height would be six feet and the median would be six feet. And what would that mean? It would mean that 50% of the observations would fall to the left of the distribution and the other 50% of the observations would fall to the right of the distribution. We would also find that this normal distribution is bell curved, meaning that a large percentage of the observations would fall or center around the mean, around that six feet average while a smaller percentage of the observations would fall on the tails of this distribution. So for example, let's say that you wouldn't really find many people that are taller than nine feet, for example, and you wouldn't find many people that are shorter than two feet. And so we would find this perfect bell-shaped symmetrical distribution. That is a normal distribution. And another interesting insight from a normal distribution is about the standard deviation. For example, let's, if we calculated the standard deviation of the distribution, let's say it was one, one foot, we would find that one, plus or minus one standard deviation would constitute about 68% of the observations. So for example, let's say that we, in our example, the height was six feet, we would find that plus one and minus one of six would be anywhere from five to seven. And we would find that 68% of the observations would fall within five or seven feet. So 68% of the population would be have a height within the range of five or seven feet. If we took two standard deviations, that would be two, we would say two times one, which is the one foot standard deviation, we'd find that anywhere from, let's say six minus two would be four, and six plus two would be eight. So anywhere from four to eight would be the range, 95% of the observations would be fall within that. So that, that's the interesting concept behind normal distribution. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply that to our growth rate. So let's continue with our model down here. And so again, we're assuming a company is paying out a dividend, initial dividend of $100. And remember dividend, this could be free cash flow. We could model free cash flow. It doesn't have to be modeling a dividend, for example. You could take a company and get, take a free cash flow and assume a constant growth rate of free cash flow. But in this example, we're just assuming D naught is 100, initial 100. And let's say that we go into the real world and we look at the growth rates of the specific company in its sector or its industry. And we find that the average growth rate of a dividend is 5%. And we also find that the standard deviation, we calculate the standard deviation of these companies and we find that it's 1%. So what we'll do is we'll run through this 10,000 different times and we're gonna use a new function here, a new library called SciPy. And so SciPy, we just imported this earlier and we call it SCT. SciPy is gonna allow us to create our normal distribution. So we're gonna use SciPy and a function called norm.ppf, which stands for a percent point function. 
and it takes in three arguments. It takes in a, a random variable here, a mean, and a standard deviation. And what you'll find is that we can completely describe this normal distribution just from its mean and standard deviation. We found that the mean was 5% and the standard deviation was 1%. And so what we'd find is this would output a growth rate for us. And we'd do this 10,000 different times, a random growth rate for us. And so remember with our concept around the 68%, 95% rule, 68% of the observations would fall within one or plus or minus one standard deviation. So what we'd find is that we would get growth rates that are closer, 68% of the time, closer around the mean of 5%. It would be very unlikely for us to find growth rates that are closer to 8%, for example, or 2%. And so we would get this distribution, this normal distribution of growth rates. And now we would do this 10,000 different times. In this example, we're going to assume that required rate of return is just going to stay at a constant 10%. And we're just applying this into our Gordon growth model, and we're getting an output of V0. And we're appending this V0 to our list, or Python list data. So let's run that, see what that does. There we go, it's done, and let's plot that. And here we go, here's our distribution. So we can describe this distribution by calculating its mean. We can even calculate its the median, so let's just run that, and p dot median. We can look at the standard deviation, the max, the max value here falls around about 7,000, so that looks like to be very unlikely given our distribution that we applied, our inputs, and our minimum is 1,000. So that is modeling a financial model using the Gordon growth model with an input using a normal distribution. So in our next video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about building out this model. And the great thing about the Gordon growth model, it, it, it's a very simplified, elegant model, but it's not very intuitive to use or applicable to use for a high growth company, for example. So for example, the Gordon growth model would be great for a company that pays a constant dividend that we believe is gonna pay a constant dividend into the future, a very mature company. So for example, maybe a Procter & Gamble or a Coca-Cola. But for example, if we wanted to model a company such as Tesla, um, we may have a very high, High, assume a very high growth rate in the inner and medium term that would eventually slow down to a, a slower growth rate into the future given competitive dynamics that we believe and other companies coming to the industry that were eating would that would eat away at its margins and growth rates so in our next video we're going to talk about using a new model at, called the H model which will allow us to model two different growth rates a high growth rate and a slowing mature growth rate and then we can then develop and use Monte Carlo simulation and apply different distributions for the high growth rate and the slowing growth rate. So if you like this video, please subscribe. Till next time, guys. Thanks.